Steve, Steve Kim had a great tweet. He said <laughs> after the fight, you know, Ryan Garcia was, thank God, thank God for everything. God is the greatest. He said he should have been as thankful to the matchmakers at uh, Golden Boy for the fight. <laughs> I well, thought that no, was pretty funny. No, I, I would agree with Steve. Listen. And you said the same thing when I said, hey, good fight this weekend. You said, yeah, easy win for Garcia. And I was like, I oh, did shit, say I that. Fortuna might have some, uh, might put up a little fight here, but not even close. No, easy fighting as uh, to grab a corner phrase from the great Floyd Mayweather, easy work, easy yeah, work, sure. you know, easy money, easy work. But um, look, first, I'll, I'll segue back, but I'll piggyback off of you mentioning Tank Davis that he's yelling for Tank Davis at 140 pounds, big difference. Yeah. Uh, if, if nothing else, because see, I'm not saying he ain't brave or that. Come on, let's not even get into kitty land. But what I'm saying is that he knows he has an edge on him at 140, and I'll tell you why. He's got a bigger skeleton, and he's yeah. only 23 years old. He's still filling out, and it shows. Tank's young, too, yeah. but he don't have that skeleton to fill out the way that Garcia does, and he's filling out. He might wind up at the end of his career at 147. I don't know, but he's, he's big. And he was much bigger than Fortuna. You can see it. Much, much. I, I'd like, like to know what he weighed weight when he got in the ring. Yeah, I'd like to know what he and what Fortuna weighed, really, individually when they got in the ring. It would be interesting. But he, with that skeleton, able to fill in at 23 years of age, he's going to have an edge on these lightweights. And he's going yeah. to gonna vacate that that weight class, which I think he's being smart. Because the best competition, the best fighters is at lightweight. Not... Junior Welto, light. I don't care what you say. Um, I I think that uh, the kid from London who's still undefeated, um, Taylor. Uh, Taylor, I I think he's overrated. I do. That's just my opinion. I, again, uh, I I get. I, I hear my brothers and sisters already over there across the pond. They they're already getting a little upset by me saying that. It's okay. Don't let me interrupt your dart game. Please, um, you know, just pick up the Guinness and continue on. Uh, you know, the, the crumpets are on me. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll do what I did last time. I have my wife make crumpets and I eat them uh, right in front of you guys. But I do. I, I think that there's not the same talent, the same really high. It reminds me almost of the 80s when the welterweight division was unbelievable with the Durants and the Sugar Ray Leonard's and the Tommy Hearns and the Benitez's and the, I mean, I just go on and on and on and on. And the lightweights now, the light heavyweights is a hell of a division too, but the lightweights now is a tremendous division that's reminiscent of the talent that was around in the 80s. The only thing that's not reminiscent is they're not fighting each other. That's the only thing that's disappointing and not the same. But he's smart to get out of there. Uh, and, and if they want to follow him, they'll follow him at their own peril, their own risk, and at his advantage. Because he does have that skeleton. He will have the edge of being a bigger guy. And he's smart. And De La Hoya and them are smart. And I'll tell you another thing. Don't expect to see any of these fights that we would chomp at the bit to see, no matter what he says, right now, because... De La Hoya already lost Canelo. All he's got is this guy. I mean, he's hanging on by a string. That's all he's got, Ken. Not only and not, he's he, not he going to risk up. his golden goose, his new golden goose. He's not risking him. He's going to make money fighting guys that are mirages. Guys like Fortuna. Honest. Look, you don't like the truth. Don't watch the show. Yeah. He's going to fight guys, and they're out there that have good records. Uh, Canelo did it. He did it with the Plants, and he did it with the BJ um, Saunders, Saunders. And, and the guys from Europe, all those guys. And I'm not knocking those guys. They're okay, but they weren't what they were purported to be, what they were built up to be. It, it, they built up a, a mirage with their record and, and made you think, oh, yeah, we're going to get a real fight. That's what they're going to do, and they're doing and listen, it's smart. It's it's business. They're doing that right now with Garcia, where they're going to build up the Fortunas and all these other guys and, and build them up. Look, they got a good record. Look, they were former champ. Look, they, look, look, look. Yeah, look. Look as he goes through them, one after another. <laughs> uh, you know, and he just builds up his record until finally 
finally when it's big enough to fight somebody but that's i think that's the track they're gonna take that's the track they're on and um as far as the fight um did you want to say something before i break down the fight because i yeah, i know there I was said, some I, I wanted to say that oscar has already showed his hand he said when canelo um lost to bevel and credit to canelo for taking a very tough fight where he yes, was like a 50 yes. 50 fight uh, Oscar I think you know, I think you underrated people. I got to tell you, I really yeah. do. Going in, yeah. he he doesn't anymore. But yes, give him credit. It's, but De La Hoya came out and said, "I would have never let him take that fight. It was too close because it was oh, even please. close to because it was close to 50 50 Oscar was like, "Yeah, we don't take fifty fifty fights. We take fights that win almost ninety percent sure we're going to win." Oh so please! He's already yeah. shown his, yeah, his Then how come you fought Triple G? You're going to tell me those were fifty fifty fights back <laughs> back then? Oh, you really with a straight face? But come on. Put a lie detector test on. But strap yourself up and then and then say this crap. Come on, stop. It's just that you're not his promoter no more and you're taking you're taking shots and, and right. uh, again you're trying to get back, which is kind of embarrassing. Again, I'm That's sorry, right. but I gotta go back to that comedian, Manis uh, what was his name? Maniscalco? Um yeah, Sebastian. Sebastian yeah, when when he would say Aren't you embarrassed? Hey, what do you think? You think you think Ryan Garcia, uh, what do you think of him versus Pro Gray at 140? Listen, I know. Fight. Yeah, look, you love Pro Gray. You're friendly with him. You became friendly with him with the show and everything. And nothing against that. That's good. I like him too. I like him as a person. I like him as a fighter. He fought a very close fight. His only loss to Josh Taylor. Very close fight. He lost it, yeah. but yeah. very razor thin. Um, over there in enemy territory in Josh, Josh's you know home country of uh, and home fans of London, but. I just think he's too big, he's too long, and his style's not good for him because he's so long, just like he was with Fortuna. He's yeah. so long with his arms, and he's so big now, um, and he's talented. He is talented. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't think those guys are going to give him... Uh, they give him a decent fight, but I, I just don't think they're going to beat him. Um, I'll tell you, let me, let me break down the fight first. All right, hold um, on one sec. Before the British fans get upset, we know Josh Taylor's from Scotland. The fight was Scotland. In London, I'm sorry. Josh, I'm Josh sorry. Josh Taylor's Scottish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fight was over there. He, Saving he's, us a couple of abusive no, messages. No, no, no. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. But uh, at the end of the day, the fight was they picked the right guy. You asked me, was it a matter of how good he looked or how bad Fortuna was? It was a combination. He looked good. Ryan Garcia is very talented. He's very talented. <laughs> and he had the right guy in front of him to show his wares, to really show off. And at the end of the day, there's always danger a little bit. He got touched a little bit, but Fortuna couldn't affect him. And he, really, there was no danger, little danger, minimal danger, um, really controlled as much as you could control it because the matchup was perfect. Um, credit to him, credit to his team, yeah, yeah, to his team, uh, all of them. And they got through it. He's in a good place. I think the plan is going to be move up. He said it, uh, move up. Uh, he sees, he feels strong. He feels like the king. Oh, that's his name, right? The king, king, king Ryan, yeah. Um, so he's feeling that way now. And um, to put tattoos on your back with, uh, the crown and a sword through the crown you have to be feeling confident I'm not joking here I'm not being facetious I'm being serious to do that you have to be yep. confident he That's put those he didn't put them on before but he's feeling it now he's feeling it now and he put those confident uh, boosters uh, those those proofs for me proofs of his confidence and his growth he put those tattoos on his back because he does feel it now he does feel he's there and um, good luck to him. Good luck to him, and he's got a great fan base. 